Hello friends, welcome back. In last video, I gave you a very brief high level overview about the ERP apps we are going to develop. In this video, we are going to set up our development environment and all the basics like Angular material and everything to, uh, create a, to create a bony structure of our application. But before that, let me give you a brief demo. So the user will be able to authenticate using, you know, the, the user identity using a social authentication like Google or Facebook. And at the same time, you will be able to have uh, assigned the role level. So for example, this user is an admin. So admin can, you know, see the other, all the other user logged into the systems and also admin can add, edit or uh, delete the privileges assigned to the other users. Now let me go back and uh, uh, log out and this time I'm going to log in as another user which is not admin all right so let me show you the difference now this user because this user is not an admin will not see the admin link so this is the kind of the behavior we want to achieve now this app is built in angular and firebase so let's get it started all right, so in last video, I have covered a lot of extensive details how to set up your Firebase and how you can integrate your Firebase database to your existing app. So I'm not going to cover those things again and also the, how to cover the authentication or how to set up your rules and the database structure. Now in next video, where I'm going to talk about how to set up the admin or role level security system in your application. So I'm going to cover all of those things in extensive details, but for now, just make sure that your existing Firebase database looks like this and you have a Firebase project set up. So at this point, this is the only requirement. And again, I'm going to cover this in, in extensive details in next video. Now I want to talk about the Angular Fire. So Angular Fire is the node module package which allows you to communicate like, you know, you connect your Angular front end to the Firebase database. Now Angular Fire by default working with Firebase, it gives you a Firebase, Firebase admin SDK. And there are a lot of pre-built functionalities which you can use to create a role-based level security in your application. Now this is again, this is the recommended way of setting up your um, any role level security in your application. However, I'm just going to make a partial use of this one. The reason is because our app is an ERP app and most of the ERP apps, you want to maintain all of the user security within the application. So I need to have a front end where I can, you know, which I can use and create or uh, revoke or, you know, grant security access to the individual users. So this is the reason I am going to use uh, our own application, uh, our own way of um, showing you on or way of setting up the role level security in our application again i'm going to cover all of those things in extensive detail in follow-up videos so now let's get it started with the setup first thing you will need is a code editor android studio intellij community edition or visual studio code so depending on what you are comfortable with please download one of this application now i like working on visual studio code especially when i'm working with typescript and angular so I'm going to download this and I'm going to use Visual Studio in the rest of my videos. Okay, all right, so let's go ahead. And next thing you will need is the Node.js. So Node.js is a JavaScript runtime engine. So you can download the long-term support version or the current version. The best way to do that to download is, instead of downloading the exe, go ahead and download the zip file. So that way, depending on your machine, like Windows or uh, uh, or Linux, just download the appropriate version, extract all of those things into one of your directory, any of the directory. And next thing, you have to make sure where your node.exe file is, you have to set up your Windows environment file to point to that node.exe file so that you can, um, you know, your system is able to find node.exe when it is running from the command prompt window. That's all you need to do to do the setup for node.js. Now let's go to the Visual Studio code, open any command prompt window. First command you want to shoot is node hyphen V. What is going to tell you is going to tell you the latest version installed on your machine. Second thing, NPM, you don't need to install uh, separately, but again, it's a good idea to check the version of it. Now to install Angular, all you have to do is NPM install hyphen G, that means global, at Angular hyphen uh, slash CLI. I already have that, so I'm just going to check the version, NG version. What is going to tell you is going to tell you the Angular CLI version installed your new application. So now, I think, uh, as you can see, I already have 9.0.4, the latest version as of today, Angular CLI in my machine. Now it's time to create the new project. Next step is, now you have to browse to the directory where you want to uh, create the new project. So in my case, I'm gonna choose the directory ERP-apps. So CD into that, 
and next thing you want to do here is uh, create a new project so ng new and you have to give a new name so in my case i'm just going to say new hyphen crm app head enter is going to ask you do you want to set up the routing say yes next thing is going to ask you what kind of css framework you want to use so i'm just going to use the css all right so now it will begin installation so make sure that you do not see any error when you're when it finishes the installation now at this point if you do the ng serve hyphen hyphen open well it should give me an error because i'm not into the right directory so now you need to go to the directory new crm app so you have to browse to the directory where you have the package.json file and it's always a good idea to see what kind of um, versions you have installed so as you can see i have everything 9.03 which is the latest version as of today so at this point if i do a ng serve inside my directory is going to open that but before i do that because i am going to use the uh, material angular material inside my application so it's a good idea to do complete that installation as well so take this command ng add angular material and i'm going to add this to in, inside my as you can see i'm not into the right directory so let's go cd into the directory where i've just installed the new project so cd new crm app here you go and now i can say ng add ng add angular material all right so uh, when you do the ng add there's a difference in npm installer and ng add ng add is going to take care of different things that means it's not only install the angular material packages is going to also include the include those to your app.module directory or it's going to do a lot of other setups like you know for example angular material also needs another packages like hammer.js so in the background is going to take care of all of those things as you can see it did make uh, corrections to the four different places now at this point if you go and do an ng serve hyphen hyphen open what is going to do is going to start serving your application on localhost 4200 but before you do that make sure that everything compiles and this is the default screen you are going to see now since i added the angular material in my app i just want to quickly test it out that angular material has been um, set up appropriately or not so let's go look for the icon so i'm just going to test it out let's go to the api tab and copy this statement import mad icon module go back to your app.module.ts file and i'm going to include all my material imports into this file so let's say material imports copy and make sure that mat icon module what you just included is also copied to your imports array perfect now let me save this now let's go to the app.component.html file uh, by default as you can see it's giving you a lot of uh, good quality css so instead of throwing this out let's copy this thing all the cascading style sheet Control x and I'm just going to move them over to a new uh, file inside assets i'm going to create a folder called css and inside css i want to create a new file called styles.css so i'm going to move all those css code inside this file save that's it okay now let's go to the app.component.html i want to get rid of all of this code and instead i want to test out my angular material so i'm just going to say mat icon and i'm going to include a material icon called home save awesome now next thing is because i moved my styles.css uh, what do you want to do uh, i also want to update my favicon.ico by default angular is giving their own uh, icon which obviously i don't like so i want to use um, you know my own favicon icon or my own images my own uh, css file so i already have a copy of those things so I'm just going to, you know, copy the entire folder, all the CSS file icons and images. I'm going to copy those and I'm going to include this to my new project. Okay, assets. Let me go ahead and delete the existing directory and uh, the directory I just copied over. I'm going to rename this as the original assets directory rename perfect that makes sense next thing you have to do because now your app you already copied a lot of things here but if your app doesn't need to know doesn't understand where these files are so you have to go to your angular.json file and you have to update the path so that your angular application knows where to find those assets images and icons and css file
So let me change this SRC. Basically, I want to say SRC assets CSS and then styles.css. Okay, that looks good. Now let's save this. So now my Angular will be able to figure it out like where to find the CSS file. Let me save this. Make sure it compiles pretty good. All right, let's go back here. So it's showing H. Actually, I wanted to show it an icon, material icon. So let's go see the web console. Um, it's not showing any error. Everything compiles okay, but it looks like there's some issues. So let me fix this as well. Assets icons, favicon.ico. Save this. So let's go back to your app.component. Maybe I'm. Let me debug this. So, by the way, you know, so to if if you want to know what kind of material icons you're looking for, all you need to do Google the material icons. So this will take you to the material.io. Now look for the icon, say home. Now this is the icon I want to include. Uh, okay, now I understand. See the home is in uh, a small uh, lowercase. So I need to go back and change it. Say home. Earlier I, I was using the camel case. Uh, but now I just want to use the lowercase and hopefully let me save this and hopefully this will fix the problem. Perfect. So now you can see now it's showing the home icon. Now next thing I want to do here um, because you know in my application I'm going to use a lot of different uh, pages or the UI components. So let's go browse into the directory here. LS. Okay. Now, uh, to generate the new component, I'm going to use the Angular CLI. So first thing I'm going to use is about us component. So say ng g c shared flat equals to true and skip test equals to true. What that's going to do is going to skip creating the test files and it will create an about us component file inside the shared directory. All right, so as you can see, it has created the three different files. Next file I want to create inside the shared is footer. Same command, I'm just going to change the file name. Okay, let me create another file called header. Okay, perfect. Now, um, let me create a simple header. So actually, what I, why I'm creating the two different headers here? One is the header by default header and other header is where uh, I can control the navigation items. You will see that later why I created the two different headers. So next thing I want to do here. Now let me start creating three different things. All the, all the files say inside the UI, I want to create a login page. So I'm going to you know keep all the login, sign up, settings pages inside my auth directory. So that's it from the shared folder. And in, I'm going to create a new folder called UI. Inside UI, I have an authentication. And inside auth authentication, I want to create um, two or three different files, a login component and sign up component. All right, next thing I want to create is uh, is settings component. So setting is the component once the user is already signed in, he will go to the settings page. Okay, I think one more last component is the admin component. So UI auth admin. All right, that looks good. So now I think all my UI components are required for to set up the role um, level security or you know login page sign up page those pages are ready I okay let's go back so I think there's one more thing I need so we have created all the components but we have to create one service or the backend service which is going to connect to the our firebase database so say ngGS services backend let me hit enter and make sure this service is created and I'm going to keep this in a separate directory as you see under services directory. All right, so now let's go to the app routing module. Now what we are going to do, we are going to include all the components what we have created inside this app routing dot uh, module dot here so that you know your routers should be able to find these components. So import about us, login, sign up, admin component, and I believe there's one more settings. Good. So now we have to define the routers. So constant routes equals to routes, which is an array. The first route I'm going to say by default, the first page when 
user logs in, it should go to the login. So path equals to blank redirect to login. Oops, okay. Now next path, uh, star star, same thing, redirect to login. Let me include about us, login, and settings and admin. Now at this point, I'm not worried about if the settings like only authenticated users should be able to go to the settings page. And that part we'll cover later, but for, for now, because I'm just creating the bone skeleton structure of my application, so I just include all the routers as I, as I, you know, um, as we create all the components. Now let's go create, you know, start serving our application. All right, so it should compile good. And by default, it should take you to the, your app.component.html. But as you see in my app routing dot module, I, what I did, I made some changes. Now the by default, it should go to the login page instead of showing to the app component. So the reason is not doing it. Uh, let's go to the, app.component.html, you need to get rid of this code and include a router outlet. So router, router outlet means this is where your pages will start displaying in this area. Let me save this and let's go and compile our application again. And idea is this time, instead of showing you that mat, you know, whatever was an app component or HTML, it should route your application to the login page. There you go. So it works pretty good. Okay, now next thing I want to do, I want to include a navigation header or a bottom footer. So again, instead of including all those into the individual files, what I want to do, I will I have created the separate components. One is the header component, other one is the footer component. So here I'm going to include my footer and header related so that you know I can just append those into the individual files. Now, one more thing, instead of when you are trying to you know add values to your footer.component.html instead of hard coding any values like your social variable so for example you have a facebook link linkedin or github so instead of hard coding those to your html files it's always a good idea to keep those settings into your environment so as you can see that's exactly what i'm doing here i defined a social um, settings and inside the social settings i can include all my um, individual links all right now while i'm here i want to include one more settings just like the social settings, I want to display the help desk. So help desk is like, you know, suppose a user wants to know uh, how the login page works, things like that. You will see that later what I mean, but these are just, so uh, the idea is um, instead of hard coding your static text inside your HTML file, put all of those things inside your environment file so that you can change it at one place and everything else it will be, your changes will be reflected. Now let me copy over and do this, make the same changes to environment.production file as well. All right. So now let's go back to the backend service. So here, um, sorry, what I want to do here, I want to create a method to access those environment settings. So that, you know, once I have this method, say get config method, and it takes a filter parameter here, and it's going to return all the settings from the environment file. So that, you know, um, whenever I want to display something on the footer or header, instead of like, you know, hard coding those things here, I can just call this method from one place, which is my backend or service, and I can access all these variables, say social or help test, uh, using this particular method. So get config, config type, and uh, what is going to return? It's going to return the config data. Let me define config data as a variable here. So export, okay, here you go, config data. And I'm going to say return dot, dot this dot config data, and I have to uh, import the environment file. So if I say config type equals to help text. So for example, I'm looking for help. So return the all the help uh, text settings from the environment file. And if I uh, if you're looking for the social authentication, so return all the social settings. So it's a very simple method. It's a very generic method I'm going to define. All it does. It takes, it, it says, okay, what kind of information you want and it's going to return those information from the environment file. Very simple. All right, so now let me just, you know, once you see the use of this method, then you will understand why I did it like this. So now let's go to the footer.component.html. Sorry, I mean to say, let's go to footer.component.ts file here. And inside this file, I want to call that method what I just defined into my backend service. So let's go import that backend service. Okay, include that in your constructor. 
I'm going to say private underscore backend service is of type backend service. Okay, so now inside this, I can access this method from the backend service and I want to go at all the social values what I just defined into the environment file. Again, everything, all of these things I did so that I don't have to hard code all those values into my HTML file. Perfect. So let's go to headfooter.component.html and here I'm going to quickly, you know, just copy paste couple of the uh, HTML text. So for example, I'm going to have a Facebook uh, link and you know, if I click on that link and everything will be included under under the footer part. So I'm just going to have a href and let me include a foot Facebook icon. Okay. So similar to Facebook, as you can see, I, I already have a lot of other things like you know LinkedIn, GitHub. I, again, depends Twitter, whatever you want to display it. Please feel free to add those things over there. So I'm just going to add a couple of more. GitHub, LinkedIn, Twitter. I think that's pretty much it. Yeah. So now let me create a break of the line and I want to include a website link and to the copyright statement. You know, sometimes in most of the website, modern looking website, it shows you add copyright statement and you know, your company name, things like that. So very simple. Okay, now see, this is the thing. I don't want to hard code anything here. So for example, Facebook link, instead of saying Facebook, so let me, you know, because I already created a method, I'll need to say this dot config data dot, um, so all I need to say config data dot fb link, as simple as that. So I don't need to hard code this thing. Everything all I did, and for example, what happens if you do not have your Facebook link is blank? Then you know you don't want even don't even want that link to show up. So so if it is blank, so here I want to include a condition saying ng if config data dot fb link. So what is going to do if fb link exists, then only show this tag. Otherwise, don't even show that. Now it's very simple. Same thing. I'm going to repeat this over and over again for everything else. Say GitHub, LinkedIn. So idea is again very simple. Read everything from the environment file, all those settings, and if those settings exist, show those icons here. Okay. Let me do it for Twitter. Same thing. NGF config data dot Twitter, and same thing for the copyright statement. Never hard code anything. So just say config data dot copyright. Let me show you what that copyright statement is. A copyright statement is powered by you know uh, your company name, All right? Config data or website. Same thing here. So let me save this. Perfect. So and right now it may not show up because remember in your app dot component HTML I did not include that footer. So let's go to that you know select the selector which is app hyphen footer. Select these things. And go to your app.component.html after router outlet. You need to include that in your tag. So app for footer. Let me save this and hopefully see everything is included. Okay. I think there are some errors. The icons are not showing up. Uh, let me go back and fix those. But as you can see, everything else is showing up. So the icons are just not visible. I think what I did, I included those as a SVG icon. That's why it's not showing up. So let me go back and fix it. So Okay, mad icon module, and then DOM sanitizer. So again, you see, there is a difference, the material icon and there's a difference of SVG icon. I'm going to use my own uh, images to way to, in, you know, to do that is like you have to add import two modules here, mad icon module and DOM sanitizer. And inside your constructor, you have to, you know, include the icon registry and the DOM sanitizer, I believe. Yep, sanitizer is of type DOM sanitizer. And here you can register your own SVG icon. So icon registry dot add SVG icon, and I'm going to say, uh, give it a name, say Facebook, and then give it a path. So again, idea is you should have your SVG icons inside your assets direct. So here I'm, I'm going to say, um, okay, give the, give it a path. So assets icons SVG dot uh, FB dot SVG. So I already have that. Let me show you what it is. So uh, inside assets icons FB dot SVG. Okay, so you can have your own SVG files. Okay, all right. So let me show you. You can also, you know, feel free to copy those SVG files. These are my own better icon. You know, so go to the source directory. You can find everything in my inside this GitHub repository here, and I have included all of those things, so you can download those things for free. 
all right so all i did i included those fb facebook and let me include a couple of more say linkedin or sorry i need to include linkedin and github as well so facebook let me change this linkedin okay one more i believe github so hopefully now that problem will be solved now my application will be able to figure it out that okay what are those svz icon so i included four let's go back here refresh let me open a web console app. all right let's see make sure it compiles okay okay one more thing see the error says it could not find the http client so the reason is not displaying my application here because i'm missing one very important module here so let's go back and include the http client so import you have to you know please pay attention to the uh, what's your web web console or error is showing it's telling you exactly what's missing it's saying http client module is missing so i all all, yeah, all i did imported that and i included it in, into my import array see everything works all right let's start working on our header now so header is going to be very very simple very same as the footer the only difference is and the header part uh, i want to include a couple of dynamic parameters that means to like you know runtime inputs so i'm going to include an input package from the angular core and let me import the backend service as well so backend service will have the similar behavior what we did in footer so let me include import backend service and constructor private underscore backend service is of type backend service now let me include couple of the input parameters and you will see that in a minute in a minute what those input parameters are page title image url and the help type so and then let me include config data config data implementation is going to be the same as what we did in footer but this time we are going to get the help text all right so that looks pretty good now let's go to the html side and start building a toolbar so i'm going to include a mat toolbar again if you don't know where all this implementation is coming from go to the material.angular.io and you will find the full detail implementation um, and all the text all the code you need so let me show you um, toolbar so if you go to the toolbar you can go to the api and you can also look at the examples this is the this is the behavior i want to achieve now the only i made a little bit of the customization because the toolbar i'm going to include uh, like you know a couple of dynamic parameters on the input toolbar so let's include a toolbar row and inside that i'm going to include a button again i want a special button so let me show you the buttons and actually it's called matte fini mini fab fabulous button so again that looks very cool so go to the button examples and you will see you know whatever depends on the requirement what kind of buttons you want to include i'm including a little circular icon mini fabulous and i'm going to include a and material icon inside it all right so let me include now let's just start including the dynamic input parameter again instead of ideas instead of hard coding for example i'm in a login page so i want to show the login if i'm in a sign up page i want to show the sign up so that's how you change your text and images on top of your toolbar so that's the behavior i want to achieve uh, and i'm going to include like a couple of two more things settings and help now in help icon if i click on that help icon idea is it should open another text box so that's why i have included a mat menu trigger mat menu trigger which is for help menu let me create the mat menu help menu and inside that i'm going to call that config data so config data help text remember all the help text i things help text text we added those into environment file so that's what i am adding it here so the idea is very simple again if i click on the help icon it should open little help which is actually coming from the environment file all right so that looks pretty good now let me go to the login works and see at top of this one now it's very simple i'm going to include app header so i'm calling that header what i just created now i want to pass the three different parameters so when i when the image url page title and help type so when login page is displayed so the image url uh, i want to display an icon so for example um, a person icon so something should show up and you know tell user that this is, this is a login page so let's include a lock okay lock and then second parameters the second input i want to uh, i want to give this to this header is the page title so i want to display a text called uh, and the help type of course 
so let's say help type equals to um, and let's give it some static so help type should match what you already have in the environment environment.ts file which is say login so let's copy this login put it here go to the uh, no login.component.html here you go help type equals to login and the paste title say login all right now save this save this if i go back to my component it says header works no it doesn't look like it compiled okay i have some errors so it says help menu mat menu okay let's go fix this error mat toolbar is not a more element all right okay so you see the error was very very clear that i do not have the mat toolbar so let's go back to this mat toolbar look at the api so looks like i need to include that so let's go copy this import mat toolbar module error is very clearly saying that i'm missing the mat toolbar module it doesn't understand what mat toolbar is so let's go include that and also add that to imports array save this i hope it compiles good Yeah, looks like it. Okay. All right, guys. So what I did looks like uh, it's still not compiling good. So you know, I, we added a new material uh, items like menu bar or uh, toolbar and mat menu item and button, but still there are some issues. So let's do one thing. I think I'm missing quite a few here. So let's go back to my GitHub repository, and I think the issue is because I am not including all of the material like uh, material modules in my app.module.ts file. So I'm just going to um, you know do it manually so let me copy paste so these are all the angular material imports i need uh, to use in my app so i think it's a good idea is like you know so i'm going to get rid of um, everything all right so let me start manually copy paste that so that i'm not missing anything looks like i am using one of those material module and it's not included into the my uh, app.module file so that looks like uh, what the error is so i'm just going to copy this over again and uh, let me get rid of this. Okay, paste it here, but looks like I missed one. Sorry, I copied over the Angular HTTP module. So let me import it manually. Import from Angular HTTP. And let's include HTTP client module. Here you go. Oh, okay. Now you know what it's it's been deprecated. So now HTTP module is inside common. So Angular common HTTP save. Hopefully that should take care of the problem. So what I did, I have included all the every possible Angular material uh, module I'm going to use to my app.module.ts, and hopefully that will take care of this problem. Okay, sorry, I need to fix one more thing. So, mat tool module is it? So, no, none of the Angular material modules should be included into the declaration array. Everything should be included into the imports array. Okay, let's see. So, the, my uh, toolbar looks pretty good now. All of the icons what I included. Look at the help icon. So, if you click on the help, the little help text appears. And at the same time, the menu items is all over. Sorry, the menu bar is over there, and all the three different dynamic input parameters. So, let me go back show you what I mean image url so in login i want to show an image say lock so that's where the lock is coming from and the second the little text and the help suppose that i change it to home see it changes to the home so that's how you dynamically show um, the image or the page title and the help text depending on which your page is a very useful functionality and looks pretty good especially when you are inside your app or suppose you are uh, showing the sign up page or login page or settings page so depending on the page where user add you can show the different text and you can dynamically change the uh, top navigation or top uh, title bar or toolbar whatever you want to call it on this application on your application so i think that's pretty much it uh, in next section we are going to start working on the real functionality that means the user social authentication building a login system and also the very important way i'm going to cover in extensive detail how to implement the role level security so that you can admin can dynamically change the uh, behavior and assign the roles uh, and privileges to individual users